Okay, so with Bill C-15, um, some of the things that are, are uh, a little bit scary, I know that, again, with the chatter that, that, that's on the internet, it, it's good because what happened is, is the Oversight Committee for, for Justice um, actually blew holes in this, in this bill by saying, no, no, you cannot tell a person, they cannot personally grow cannabis for themselves. Unless you can prove trafficking, we're not going to mandatorily throw people in jail. Because it could be mitigating factors, like they're sick, you know, and uh, they just haven't done the paperwork. Uh, stuff that should be looked at. So the Justice Department effectively blew a hole in this. Um, furthermore, they made it in effect so that unless they change the language, uh, less than four plants in, in effect would be legal in Canada. Um, however, uh, uh, the Conservatives, of course, are moving for a nine-month rather than 12-month mandatory sentence if trafficking is proven. Um, uh, and, and on a personal note, what's happened is, is the Justice uh, Committee said to, to the feds that basically they need to change this bill to uh, allow for personal use so that mandatory minimums are not applied if you prove personal use only. That being said, I am not endorsing that you take that approach. I suggest you get a federal license. Um, take whatever stance you choose to take. but. Uh, we just remember the police prove trafficking very easy and they have a lot of people that testify as to what would constitute trafficking. And then there's also the fine tuning of the bill and the fine print that a lot of people may or may not have read and I'm, I would like to address some of that right now. Um, some of the um, most scariest things isn't that it's just mandatory minimums. Let's just say that, um, okay, trafficking. Uh, what would constitute trafficking? Okay, one count, go down the street, you get caught giving it to a friend, your friend rats you out because you owe her so much for fixing her tires or her husband didn't pay your husband, whatever. She rats you out to the cops, cops come to your house, they find your plants. Now they got trafficking, they got production. Then they find out you got a kid in the house. One more aggravating factor. You're looking at three years mandatory sentencing. And then guess what, if you have cookies, cannabis cookies, and if you happen to have the ability to make resin, cannabis, cannabis resin, Schedule 2 of the CDSA, uh, which again we'll get into a little bit, but um, uh, it, it, that's another year to two years. You know, so we're talking up to five years mandatory minimums, okay, for a family that's doing nothing more than growing seven to twenty plants. I know how crazy that sounds, but you know what? In America, it don't sound crazy at all because to them it sounds like, wow, that's a pretty easy sentence because they know what the hell it's up. You know, they have seen it for years. It's funny though, as the Americans are repealing laws and looking at how to legalize cannabis, we're sitting here looking at how to criminalize it further. You know, um, on that note, we need to look at some other mitigating factors, such as the amount that you have at your house. Now, we know and the police know by their own formulations approximately how much a plant can yield. So uh, I'm not going to get into police formulations because they change by jurisdiction and by country, of course, and region. Um, however, um, the police estimates, if you have more than one kilogram in your house, another one year mandatory if they prove trafficking. Again, if they prove trafficking, if it's personal, they haven't got any wiretaps, they haven't got anything, you don't have bag scales and dope all in the same drawer. If whatever it is that you do that's gonna prevent them from laying a trafficking charge on you, okay, you might just be away, get away with some lesser time, okay? And the mandatory minimums would not be able to be in effect. Um, and of course, lawyers are probably um, looking at these, these different angles right now. Um, that being said, 
Um, anything over one kilogram, and we need to remember one kilogram is not much, okay? Six or seven plants can eat very easily produce, you know, well over one kilogram. Um, that's, that's not an issue. One plant, in fact, and grown properly can produce a pound. So, um, you know, it's, not that, it's not, that hard, not that far off to look at the different ways things can be done. Um, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit scary when you think that, um, for each offense, these things apply. So now let's say that you sold to Judy down the street, you sold to Marge, and you sold to, uh, Frank. Well, Judy, Marge, and Frank just ratted you out, okay, and built a case against you. Well, now that's 15 years. Mandatory. Um... The language in the bill actually goes on to read such things as public safety, okay? It's also another one year mandatory sentence if you're producing drugs in your house, and again, cannabis, whether it's for personal use, if they prove trafficking, if you're producing it in your house. Uh, there's also a public safety clause. What constitutes public safety? I don't even know, you know? What constitutes public safety? It is a very broad context, actually, in which they use it in. Um, however, the fact remains is that it says that if you have uh, a public safety issue, so in other words, if the city comes in, rules that your grow up is a danger, then you can face one year in jail as well for that, okay, for that factor, because you became a public hazard to somebody else, public hazard to the city. Um, uh, I don't know how that happens. I'm an organic grower, so I really don't know how we become uh, public hazards. Um, I do know that there's people out there that do things that are silly, and, uh, and, and a lot of that, I believe, also comes to accountability to the feds themselves who give a federal license and don't tell anybody a goddamn thing about how to use it, okay? Don't give them a book. Don't, don't give them nothing. They sell them the seeds and don't even tell them about male to female ratios. You know, these are deterrence factors. Nothing more, nothing less. And they've done a very successful job, they being the feds, in dividing us, being the cannabis culture, into a host of different voices, a host of different factions and groups who don't really work together in unity. And without that unity, we're not as strong as we once were. And um, that's my personal take on it. Um, so, again, w looking at the fact that they, that, they can, that they can raise these different things, um, as well as with cannabis resin, uh, when they can raise that up to up to two years, okay, if you're producing the resin, uh, for instance, if you're baking butter in the back and selling cookies out the front, okay, you're facing time. It's one year mandatory plus another year mandatory for producing it on site, okay? So there's a lot of different things that if this passes as the language stands, um, it is it's pretty scary. We know the language is going to change a little more, but I'm not seeing much. Um, and, uh, and of course, anybody who has a child, and I mentioned this, anybody who has a child faces a mandatory one year jail sentence. Now, as a father, it's hard for me to even think about it because, um, you know, it's one thing to, uh, to fight for a cause. It's another thing to jeopardize one's child. Um, and no one should feel like they're jeopardizing a child to grow a plant that's safe in an effective, that's, in a, in an effective way that's safe um, uh, in a manner that has not proven to start fires or to cause harm. Um, this has been stuff that has not been found and it has not been proven. It's been, uh, it, it's been more um, prohibition, um, prohibition uh, tactics that we've seen for years. Um, unfortunately, for whatever reason, this time, um, if it's the Canadian public or who it is it's, that's not noticing, or maybe it's that this new generation, the youth, maybe we need to speak up a little more. Um, you know, I'm not really a youth anymore. I'm becoming a little older. My daughter is turning 10 this year. Um, things are changing for me personally. But, uh, you know, I believe it's time that the youth start to let their voice know it. Um, because we all know the facts. The Internet's broken up the truth. And uh, bills like this are going to serve to do nothing but destroy families, build more jails, force more recovery houses. And of course, it's not even addressing, not even looking at bloodborne pathogens in relation to drugs. They said this was a drug bill. I think this is a cannabis bill. I think this is an intent.